Hello and welcome to this interview. I'm Megan Gibson, co-host of the Trauma Super Conference. Today I'm speaking with Dr. Ronald Siegel, an assistant professor of psychology part-time at Harvard Medical School. He's the author of several books, including The Extraordinary Gift of Being Ordinary, Finding Happiness Right Where You Are, and The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems. He's a longtime student of mindfulness meditation, teaches internationally about the application of mindfulness practice in psychotherapy and other fields, and maintains a private clinical practice in Lincoln, Massachusetts. Dr. Ronald Siegel, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks so much for inviting me. So one of my favorite things about talking with you is how well you explain the process of evolution and how our brains have evolved to predispose us to things like trauma. So I'd love if you would start there. Yeah, you know, there there are so many aspects of our brains that were adaptive for survival and adaptive for reproducing and passing our genes on to our kids and even for taking care of our kids, which predispose us toward a lot of psychological suffering, including toward trauma. And uh, if, if it's not too complicated of a map, there are actually four, I think, um, predispositions of our brain that get us into trouble vis-a-vis -vis trauma. Uh, the first one is very, very basic. It's, it's something that we share with all other animals. We even share with bacteria. It's the tendency to recoil from that which might be dangerous or painful right? And, uh, and to move toward that which is pleasurable. And we see this obviously throughout the animal kingdom where, um, where all organisms, uh, you know, if, if, if something is, is sharp or hot or in some way painful, they, they will withdraw from it. Um, and uh, the way this shows up for us is, while this makes perfect sense evolutionarily in order to keep our bodies intact and and uh, and and be be healthy in the world when it comes to emotional experience it's not always so wise and what happens is our minds automatically when we have a painful emotional experience recoil from it and withdraw from it. And we do that to such a degree, and we have this interesting capacity to be able to actually block it out of awareness. And you could see also how this would be very adaptive in terms of our, our evolutionary history. Let's say, you know, you had uh, um, experienced something uh, uh, really horrible with a lion, in, you know, in the past out there on the African savanna, and you're in a new situation that requires you to think quickly, you don't want to be thinking about the lion. You want to be thinking about what you have to do now. The same way, for example, a first responder. Now, you know, they're not thinking about all the scary things and the hurt things that have happened. They're focusing on how do I save this person, right? Um, but in the process of pushing it out of awareness, we create a situation in which a lot of our thoughts and feelings are pushed out of awareness, and it's particularly the painful one. So that's that's the first mechanism, and and, and we'll talk about the you know the way in which by splitting off experiences that are painful, we actually predispose us toward all sorts of <clears throat> post traumatic difficulties because these these memories they don't just disappear, as one of my patients put it so eloquently. When we bury feelings, we bury them alive and mm. they come back and they want to re-express themselves. And then we're always stressed out trying to maintain this, trying to keep them out of awareness.